I tear into Samira's driveway and fly out of the car. The house is dark. It's Tuesday. The night her husband takes the kids to their bowling league. The garage is wide open. Samira, I yell. Silence. I flip the light switch and nothing happens. Moving quietly in the darkness, the golf club in my right hand, I tiptoe along until I reach the laundry room door. Before I can turn the knob, the door flies open and she's standing in front of me. Erica. The small room is illuminated by a single camping lantern. She's planned this. Nice to see you. She grins, hatred blazing from her eyes. I see Samira tied up on the floor, her eyes wide with terror. Erica points a gun at her head. My hand tightens around the golf club. Erica laughs, a wild, cackling sound. Don't you know not to bring a knife to a gunfight? She taunts. Don't hurt her, I plead. It's me you have a problem with. Oh, I'd say it's more than a problem. You've stolen everything from me. Your entire life should be mine. Erica spits the words at me, saliva spewing from her mouth. I'm shaking, trying to keep an eye on her and the gun at the same time. I ask, when you took my car that night, you wanted us to believe you were dead, didn't you? You always left me out. They chose you over me for prom queen. And then you stole Derek. I loved him, but you made him fall in love with you. Put the gun away, Erica, I beg. You don't have to do this. Headlights shine in the window and she scowls. Who the hell is that? A loud noise fills the air and I turn around. Jennifer stands there, holding the chainsaw. She barrels toward Erica, brandishing it above her head. Erica screams and the gun falls from her hand. You bitch! Erica cries, her eyes wide with disbelief, as the teeth rip into her flesh and blood spurts from her thigh. I scramble to pick the gun up and aim it at Erica. Call 911, I yell to Jennifer. She turns off the chainsaw and pulls out her cell phone, jabbing at the numbers. Jennifer bends down to untie Samira. She's in shock, her arms wrapped around herself. Erica moans, lying on the floor, her face white and twisted in pain. Finally, I hear sirens and turn to Jennifer. Why did you come? I hiss at her. I followed you here, she replies. I wanted to talk to you. When I saw the photos in your house, I realized he'd lied to me. I didn't know he was married. My earlier rage towards her evaporates. Before I can respond, the police and EMTs arrive, taking both Samira and Erica out on stretchers. Jennifer turns to me and says, I would never have been with him if I'd known he was married. In that moment, I think of all his lies and betrayals and make a decision. After we give our statements to the police, Jennifer comes home with me. I pour a glass of wine and Jennifer a glass of sparkling juice and we go outside to wait for Derek to come home. He pulls up, gets out of his car and starts up the walk. I relish the look of shock on his face when he sees Jennifer sitting next to me. Then he looks at the bag strewn on the porch steps. What are those? Your things, take them and leave. We're finished, I tell him. He comes closer, a menacing look on his face. Now hold on a second. His words are cut off by the sound of the chainsaw in Jennifer's hands. If I were you, I'd go now while you still can, I yell. He grabs the trash bags and runs. To getting rid of the garbage, I say as I raise my glass. Jennifer clinks hers against mine and we both drink. <laughs>